Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can create a heat map in Google Sheets to track stocks. So if you ever go on financial websites you'll often find these sort of heat maps to show which stocks have been doing well and which ones have not been doing well. So I'm going to show you how we can set that up in Google Sheets and create a custom list for yourself that you want to track and how to show that. So I'm going to show you how we can pull in those stock prices, stock movements and also rank them and then apply conditional formatting so we can create an easy to see chart that automatically resorts based on which stocks did well for that period and which ones did not do well. The first thing to do is create your list of stocks that you want to track. You don't want to list every possible stock just because that could slow down your um, your computer and obviously it's difficult for Google Sheets to track that many stocks. So here I've got a list of the 50 largest stocks based on their market caps as of January 14th. So I've got some ticker symbols and a good way to test to make sure that you've got the ticker symbols set up correctly and reading properly is just to use the Google Finance function and to make sure you're referencing that ticker and for the attribute just putting in price just to see if it pulls in today's stock price. So I don't get an error message which is basically what I'm looking for. As long as there's no error here, that means I've got it set up correctly and the stocks are pulling in properly. If you're getting an error, that may mean that your, your ticker symbol's off or if you're trying to pull something from a different exchange, you may just want to double check that it's formatted correctly. So what I'm gonna do is instead of putting in the price, what I'm actually gonna calculate is the percent change. So there's a couple options we can do here. Um, if we just want to pull in the percent change for the current day, then I can use that Google Finance function again and reference that ticker symbol and then enter for the attribute change percent. And so now we can see, pull this down, we can see the percent change for the current day. So this is an easy way to, to pull in those values and make sure that uh, you know if we want to track the current day we can have that easily pulled into Google Sheets. Now Apple's stock price looks a bit off here but it's actually its actual change as of right now is is zero percent so that that is in fact correct and so if you actually want to convert these in percentages what you would do is divide this by by a hundred and then you can convert it into a percentage but I'm not going to use um, days percent change instead I'm going to do a slightly different calculation I want to calculate how these stocks have performed over the past year so I'm going to show you how we can calculate that so I'm going to undo this and instead of the change percentage I'm going to pull in just the current price to start with and I'm going to break this out into smaller into multiple formats so it's easy to track what I'm doing so I've got the current price here as of as of right now what I'm also going to do is use the Google Finance function once more reference this uh, ticker symbol for the attribute I'm still referencing the price but for the start date what I'm going to say is go back 365 days so I'm going to use the today function minus 365 so this way it's dynamic enough it's always going to be looking back 365 days I close this out and now it's going to give me that stock price as of then now I don't want to return a table so what I'm going to do it, is use the index function and to grab the second row and the second column and this is always going to be the second row and the second column that I'm pulling from just because I'm only selecting one specific date so I've got this and now I've got that historical price so now I'm going to copy this formula control C and put it into my function here so now I've got the current day's price divided by the price a year ago and what I'm going to also do is add a minus one here to convert that into a percent change and now use my percentage and so now I can see that Apple's stock price is up 27.6 percent for the past year and the dates might not be exactly uh, lining up to a year but it gives you an idea of how the stocks perform over, over the past 12 months so if I copy this down you know with Google Sheets it makes it really easy to do these calculations so I can easily pull in all that data now this is why you want to be careful not to include too many stocks. You don't want to try, try to track thousands of them because obviously if it's doing this many calculations that can really slow down and impact, um, impact your files. So I would suggest maybe um, you know, 50, 100 stocks, maybe potentially 100, a couple hundred stocks if you wanted to, but just bear in mind that 
if your list becomes too large, you know, it could potentially slow down and uh, have, uh, have performance issues. Now that I've got these percentages, what I'm going to do is use the rank function to determine which ones are the best performing and worst performing. I don't want to create another list that sorts this data and I don't want to have to manually resort it either. So instead, I'm going to use the rank function. So the rank function is fairly simple. We're taking this value and comparing it against the entire column. And so I'm going to use the autofill here. So really easy. So I can see that NVIDIA was the top performing stock in this list at 133.5%. The next one was Broadcom 102.82%. So as you can see, we've got, we've got the ranking, which is really all we need. We don't need to do any special sorting for this. And by setting it up this way, it makes it really easy to reference these values without having to do a sort, do a sort via macro or have it uh, pull into a separate list somewhere. Next up, what I'm going to do is now put these stocks into a grid so I can see the best performing one followed by the second, third, and so on. So to do this, I mean, I can set this up anywhere. I'm just going to use, going to use column E here. I'm going to use the index function. And what I want to extract is the stock ticker in column A. And I'm going to use the match function to determine which row I'm pulling from. And so I'm going to search for... Um, the first first bit, first value, the highest ranking stock. So I'm going to use the column function. I'm going to tell you why in a second. So I'm going to reference column A1, that value. So basically I'm pulling in that first column because what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this formula across. So as it goes to um, uh, the, net, the next column, it's going to change to column B1, C1, D1. And so it's going to update. So there's going to be the first value, then the second, third, and fourth. I could manually type them in, but this way it makes it easier when I'm copying the formula over. So I'm looking for that first value within, within my range here, column C, and I'm looking for an exact match. And so I'm going to freeze these, uh, freeze these columns, and I'm pulling in that first first call. And so it gives me NVIDIA. So now I'm going to drag this across. So I got the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. So I've got those 10 stocks. I'm going to center them. So as you can see, that column changed to B1, C1, D1, and so on. And so it's automatically incrementing these values. The next thing I'm going to do is pull in the percentages as well. So normally when you see these heat maps, you see the stock ticker, and then you've also got the price as well, or the, perform the, the performance. So I'm gonna copy this function in its entirety, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing, except this time, instead of pulling the value from column A, I'm gonna pull it from column B. So I've just changed this column, and so I've got that 133.5%. Center that, copy this across, and so I've got these values all lining up next to tick ticker symbols. So I'm starting to create this grid. I'm going to show you how we can copy this down to other rows as well afterwards. But first, I'm going to set up these first two, two rows and then replicate that process to, to other values. The important part is to get the structure set up and the conditional formatting and then copy it after as opposed to trying to do that um, afterwards. One thing I'm going to do when I'm setting up the conditional formatting is I'm going to create a small little table here where I've got my ranges. So basically it's going to make it easy if I want to adjust these percentages later on for my conditional formatting rules. So the first threshold I'm going to say is 100%. So if it's more than 100%, it goes into the highest category. So stocks like NVIDIA and Broadcom will be highlighted in color. If it's more than 50%, it goes to the next one, 25%. 0% and then I'm going to put minus 100% which is basically a catch-all to grab everything else. So the key is I'm going to reference these values in my conditional formatting rules to make it easy if at a later point I want to update these percentages. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab these values, these ticker symbols here and go to format, conditional formatting and I'm going to create a rule here based on a custom formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking at the value below. So I've selected E1, but I want to base it on the value in E2. So I'm going to say E2 is greater than or equal to, and I'm going to reference that value here in P1. 
So I'm going to freeze that $p $1. And so now I can apply my conditional formatting rule, a bright green. And so we've got that highlighted accordingly based on that. And so it's important to set up these references correctly because I'm putting in E2. I'm not freezing that one because I want that to move along with, with my range, but I am freezing P1 just because I always want that percentage to be tied to this, to this formatting. So now I'm going to create another rule. And again, it's going to be based on this same formatting this time, P2. And now I'm going to make this, let's say, um, say this third largest dark green, change this to white. And it's easy now to set up the other one. So if you're setting up conditional formatting rules in Google Sheets, especially multiple, what you're going to want to do is rather than closing out of here and going back to create a new conditional formatting rule, what you can do is just piggyback off the one you've already created. And if you hit add another rule here, you're not starting from scratch. You're basically copying that rule all over again. And so in this case, I, I just want to update my logic, say, okay, if it's greater than P3, now I'm going to adjust this and let's say go a lighter shade of green and so on. So I'm updating it so I don't have anything that fall, falls in the 25 to 50% category, but I can set that rule up now. I'm going to create another one as well. This time I'm looking at P4 and this one I'm going to just make white and a font of black just to show that it's around 0%. And let's create another rule here for P5. And this one is going to be red because this is going to show negative values. So we can preview what our custom formatting is going to look like here without um, having to have those values already populated here. So I've got that set up. So I've got my rules for all those different scenarios. Now, I'm going to also set up the rules for these percentages. Now, I'm not just going to copy the formatting rules um, from above because what that's going to do is that's going to update the logic and basically I want two sets of rules one for the ticker symbols one for the percent changes I don't want to try to combine them because then it's going to get messy and they're they're not going to work properly it's a lot easier to just set it up so you've got two sets of rules um, one for this one for the symbols and one for the percentages so I'm going to grab these percentages and create a new rule so this time I'm still going to use a custom formula, but when I'm referencing it, I'm going to say E2, the same value that I've got here for the conditional formatting rule, I'm going to say greater than or equal to, we're going to still use dollar, um, the dollar sign, whoops, um, dollar sign P, dollar sign 1. So I'm still referencing that first value, and I'm going to apply the same conditional formatting rules. This is bright green, just so it's a match with what I have above. I'm going to hit add another rule. We're going to do the same thing, P2. And I want to match that formatting. Again, I grab the third one there. White font. Add another rule. So this can be a little bit tedious initially setting it up, but it'll make it a whole lot easier um, later on. So we've got P3, which is 25%. Let's go. There we go. So I've got that one. Creating another rule, P4. This one was white and black text, add another rule for P5, and now we've got the red and the white. So now, as you can see, we've got all those rules set up as well. And so again, it's important to keep those separate just so we're not trying to create something overly complex where we're setting up a rule that's gonna accommodate both situations because this one, for these ticker symbols, I wanna look below, whereas for the percentages, I want them to look at the exact same cells. So that's why I've got two sets of rules here and I don't want to try to mix them up and merge them together and create one comp overly complex rule potentially. So next up what I'm going to do is now just create my, my formatting for these ticker symbols and um, percentages. So this is obviously up to your discretion however you want this to look. So for example, I might bold these ticker symbols, make them size 20 so they stand out. Um, what you may want to do is also just add a border. So if I wanted to add a border to this, I could for every single um, every single stock, just so it has that bit of an outline. But this is just really at your discretion, whatever you prefer to, however you however you want it to look, basically. But this is basically the the bulk of of this. Now what I can actually do is now copy this over. So I've got the first 10 stocks. So let's copy this down. So I've got 50. 
So I'm going to grab this entire range, control C and control V. So it's also going to copy those conditional formatting rules along with it. Now, at first glance, this is wrong, obviously, because I don't want to start back it at the first uh, first value. So what I'm going to do, I've got this value in A3. I'm just going to add plus 10. And now do the same thing down here, plus 10. And so I've got Oracle. Let's drag this across, and it's going to automatically update. Control C, Control V. Let's change this to, let's say, plus 20 now. So this is can be a little bit tedious to, to set up, but once we've got it, we can reuse this over and over again. Control C, Control V. From 20, let's change this to 30. There we go. And one more, one more range here. So let's do plus 40. And so that's gonna give us that 40 to 50. So let's clean up my outline here. And so just like that, we've got our, our list now. So obviously by doing it this way, there weren't any stocks that were um, negative, so there were not any uh, red conditional formatting that, that was applied, but I can adjust this. So I can go back into here. So let's say I had a lot of stocks that were um, you know, over 25%, but I can adjust this range to let's say, I just wanna grab the stuff that's over 30% and perhaps this one be 10%. So now I've got a bit more variation in my colors. So even though these ones were, were not negative, but because they were red, they were, and actually the one thing I didn't do here was I didn't copy my, my formulas over. So I got the same repeating tickers. There we go. So the bottom one was NVO. There we go. So now I've got some negatives in here. So as you can see, we can manipulate this and adjust our rules accordingly. So if we want to grab more colors, we can adjust this formatting. So we can pick up more highlights. Let's say make this uh, 20%. You know, however it is we want to set up these thresholds, we can do that. All right, so there we go. So now we've got a good mix. We've got some negative values in here. So we've got those in red. We've got the ones that were slightly positive in white backgrounds and they're very best performing ones in, in the brightest screen. So by doing this, it's a lot easier to, to track your stocks and make it easier to display you know, how they've done over a period of time. And of course you can change this. I've set this up for the past 365 days going back a year, but you can modify this because this is really just basing off these percentages. So if I just wanted to use that change percentage, I just wanted to see how they're doing today. I can change this and let's get rid of this formula and say change percentage. Let's say divided by 100 to convert that into a percentage. Now my formulas are going to be a little bit off here or my conditional formatting because obviously I'm not gonna have such large changes. So what I could do is change this so I had the top ones at a 2%. So we can do that on here. Um, 1%, 0%, or actually 0.5%, let's say. And there we go, so we've got them updating. Now some of these are erroring out. What do we have here? So we've got uh, so we've got some values where it's hard to set up the ranking. So what you may wanna do in such a situation, just to make sure you've got um, every value occupying its uh, own rank, because you could potentially have percentage changes that are identical. So what I would do in this case is just, just use something like the row function. So row, let's say A1 divided by you know 1000 plus this, and let's put this in parentheses just to force a decimal place. So it's not going to be exactly um, exactly the same because the issue here is we had some where it was hard to differentiate based on the rank. But by just pulling in the roll value, dividing it by some large number that's not going to impact um, these charts or this table, but it's going to allow it's going to be enough to differentiate for Google Sheets to track it to show that it's slightly different value. So the story is going to be the same. The percentages are going to be similar but you're just not gonna have that issue where a two stocks may occupy um, the same rank and cause, cause those errors. So by doing that, you can allow it to ensure that the, they're not gonna be the same. So that's a wrap for this video. If you did like it, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.